the y behind our special triangles. So y, if this is 1, this is 1 half, and this is root 3 over 2, and if this is 1, then this is root 2 over 2, and this is root 2 over 2. Why? I told you everything in math makes sense. You don't have to memorize anything. Well, this doesn't make a lot of sense right now, does it? Let's start with the 30, 60, 90 case. It all starts with an equilateral triangle. An equilateral triangle, 60, 60, 60, with side lengths, 1. Well, that equilateral triangle gets cut in half so that this is a right angle and that this is 30 degrees. The angle's bisected, so that means we have two equal lengths here. Since this whole side was 1, this side must be 1 half. So that's the reason behind your 1 half there. Now how do we get the missing side? Well, we know a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And so that's pretty much how I get the rest. Let's call this a. Then we have a squared plus b, which is 1 half squared, equals c squared, which is 1 squared. a squared plus 1 half squared, which is 1 fourth, equals 1 squared, which is 1. a squared equals 3 fourths. a equals plus or minus, but since we have side lengths, I'm just doing plus root 3 over 4, which is root 3 over root 4, because we can split it up like that, and we have root 3 over 2. That's the y behind our 30, 60, 90 triangle. Our 45, 45, 90 is even easier. So in this case, we know this is 1, this is 45, and this is 45. Well, since these angles are equal, then their side lengths must also be equal. And so in this case, we have a squared plus b squared equals c squared just becomes x squared plus x squared equals 1 squared. 2x squared equals 1. Divide both sides by 2. x squared equals 1 half. x equals root 1 half. Again, I don't need my plus or minus because I'm dealing with side lengths which is equal to root 1 over root 2. Root 1 is simply 1 over root 2. Of course, we've got to rationalize that denominator. And that's where we come up with our root 2 over 2. Thus, our 45, 45, 90 triangle. Okay, so now that we've got those basics down, we really need to be thinking in terms of radians. So pi radians is 180 degrees, right? And so 60 degrees, you're thinking 180 divided by 3 is 60 degrees. So that would be pi over 3 radians. And then for 30 degrees, well, you think 180 divided by 6 is 30. So that means that 30 degrees is pi over 6 radians. And then the same thing with 45 degrees, well, that's 180 divided by 4. So 45 degrees is going to be pi over 4 radians. All right, let's go ahead and start with something super simple. So let's start with our unit circle. And remember, it's called a unit circle because the radius is one unit. And that's why we've made a big deal of making this hypotenuse one, right? Because it's a unit circle, and we want to plop all of these triangles, basically, onto this unit circle. So that's kind of the goal that we're thinking of. But let's start real easy, and let's just start at each of these. So we have one time around the circle, whole time around the circle. Remember, the radius is 1, and their circumference is 2 pi r. So if the radius is 1, their circumference is 2 pi. So one time around is 2 pi. Half of it would be pi, break that in half, we have pi over 2, and then this is 3 pi over 2. Okay, this point, so at 0 radians, we're at the point 1, 0. The x is 1, the y is 0. At pi over 2, we're at the point 0, 1. At pi, we're at the point negative 1, 0. And at 3 pi over 2, we're at the point 0, negative 1. Let's break it down into cosine and sine. So cosine, 0 sine 0, cosine pi over 2, sine pi over 2, cosine pi, sine pi, cosine 3 pi over 2, and the sine of 3 pi over 2. Cosine is going to be our axis, so 1, 0, negative 1, 0. 
our sine is our y, sine is zero, zero, sine of pi over two is one, sine of pi is zero, and the sine of three pi over two is negative one. Hopefully that feels nice and good to you. That's our basics. Let me move that over to the side for now. So that's our basics. Now let's just dig into some things with this pi over three, okay? So let's deal with the cosine of pi over three, the cosine of two pi over three, the cosine of four pi over three, and the cosine of five pi over three. 3. We'll do the same thing with sine. So let's just first do the cosine of all of these. When I'm thinking pi over 3, I'm thinking adjacent. So what's touching the pi over 3? What's touching it? 1 half is touching it. So all of these are going to be either 1 half or negative 1 half, okay? Because that's what is touching the pi over 3, and that's what we're dealing with. So cosine of pi over 3, that's obviously pi over 3 is just a third of the way around the circle. It's in the first quadrant right here. So pi over 3, the x coordinate is positive. It's just 1 half. 2 pi over 3, think the top half of the circle split into thirds. 1 third, 2 thirds. 2 pi over 3 is right here, okay? So the cosine now is going to be negative. You see? It's a negative x coordinate. 4 pi over 3 is 3 pi over 3 and a little bit more, another third. So 4 pi over 3 is right here. And so clearly the x is still negative there. 5 pi over 3, 4 pi over 3, this is going to be 5 pi over 3 right here. So the x coordinate is back to being positive again. So that's how we do that. And then when we do sine, the sine is what's opposite. Opposite is this root three over two. Sine of pi over three, that's positive. The sine of two pi over three, well two pi over three is also a positive y. But four pi over three is going to be a negative y and so is five pi over three. Those are both going to be negative answers. So that's how I do that. That's as simple as it is. Let me just scoot this over here and do a couple more. All right, let me just erase my little markings on my circle here. All right, that's probably good enough. Let's just play with this now. Cosine of five pi over six, of seven pi over three, and cosine of 11 pi over six, and then let me do one with a fourth. So let's just do the cosine of three pi over four. All right, go ahead and you try these on your paper and then come back and see if you get the same thing that I get. All right, so cosine of five pi over six. I'm thinking that's almost six pi over six, right? And six pi over six would be right here. That's pi, but I fall pi over six short, right? Five pi over six to get to six pi over six, I fell pi over six short. I'm dealing with the pi over six, and I know that cosine is touching. It's gonna be root three over two. I know that sine is opposite. That's going to be the one half. And then I just think, is it positive or negative? The cosine's negative but the sine is positive, and that's it. Now seven pi over three, well, what am I thinking? I'm gonna think six pi over three, because that's the nearest whole number, and six pi over three is two pi. So two pi would be right here, and I go one third more, right? Six pi over three, seven pi over three, I go a third more. So it's right here, that's what quadrant it's in. So now I'm thinking pi over three. That's my 60 degrees, so touching is one half, and across is root three over two. And since it's in the first quadrant, this is positive and positive. Cool. Next up, 11 pi over six. Well, 12 pi over six is a whole number and that's two pi, right? But I fall pi over six short. So that's actually going to be right here in this quadrant, right? And again, I'm at pi over six, so I'm dealing with my root three over two and my one half and my x coordinate is positive, but my y coordinate is negative here. Finally, three pi over four, well I'm going to think four pi over four, and that's right here, but I fall pi over four short. Now pi over four, I'm dealing with both the opposite and the adjacent are root two over two. Both of them are the same, and I just have to think of signs. So three pi over four, again, I'm in this quadrant right here, so I'm negative for the cosine, but I'm positive for the sine. And that's it, that's really it. Those are the basics of what you need to know for trig in calculus. If you can do what I did here, you are pretty much good to go. All right, that's it for this lesson. Hope it helps, bye.